This is John Black, Super Chemist. This is not an instructional video. It is just a vlog showing a video account of some chemistry experiments I have done or I'm learning about. I do not go over all safety concerns, so if you repeat anything in the video, you do it at your own risk. So this is part five and the final part of sodium ethyl sulfate synthesis. All right, so I got about 55 grams. I was gonna do something extra to this, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna talk about it. You see, I got about 55 grams of product there. A mole of sodium ethyl sulfate is 148 grams per mole. The only problem with my product is I believe that this it's like water crystallization. Uh, I think the same thing's going on here though with ethanol, okay, instead of it incorporating a water molecule into its crystalline lattice. There is no water, so we used ethanol to recrystallize it. So it takes a, one molecule of ethanol and incorporates it into its crystalline lattice. I am pretty sure that's the way it goes, but I'm not 100% sure. So there may not be any ethanol in there for all I know. But anyways, if I am right, the total of both of them together would be 194 grams per mole. I'm just going to leave it on there. There's two ways that you can get rid of this, though, okay? The reason why I'm leaving it on there is because I want to see if it affects the yield. The next time I do this, I will... Because I'm going to make some uh, nitroethane with this. So the next time I make sodium ethyl sulfate, I will do what I'm about to tell you. That way I will get rid of the ethanol off of there, and I will make some nitroethane a second time and see what the difference is between the yields. You know what I mean? That's how you learn. Now when I make the nitro methane, ethane, I mean, I have to heat up the pot up to 120 C. So my hopes is that using this uh, sodium ethyl sulfate that has this um, ethanol attached to it, you know what I mean, and, and it's crystalline lattice, I'm hoping that when I heat it up that will break apart and the ethanol will distill out first. And then I'll take the product to 120C and start the reaction. I'm hoping. At least that's my thoughts. And if it hurts the yield or whatever, you know, then the next time I'll try it without the ethanol being part of the crystalline amatis. Another idea would be to take the sodium methyl sulfate that has this ethanol on it, right? Take that and dissolve it in water, and then recrystallize it from water. That way, you'll most likely remove the alcohol uh, crystalline part of it, but you'll add water onto it, and then use that to make the nitroethane. The thing is, I don't know how water or ethanol affects that reaction to make the nitroethane. So we'll see. Keep in mind, I've never done this experiment before, and I'm, from this point on, I'm really guessing about this ethanol crystallization and how to get rid of it. I'm just, you know, using some guesses from other ways that you move, remove water with crystallization from the cell. And like I said, I'm not even sure that there is a crystallization of ethanol on there. It's possible, I don't know that. Uh, so anyways, the boiling point of ethanol is about 78%. How do you get rid of water crystallization when you want a, a, a uh, salt to be anhydrous? Usually you just put it in the oven above the boiling point of water. You know what I mean? You put it in the oven at 300 C or something. I mean, uh, 300 Fahrenheit, uh, 400 Fahrenheit, depending on what the salt is. But, this is ethanol. Keep in mind, you know, if you have a, uh, you are, you would be putting ethanol fumes in your oven that are very flammable if you did this. Um, but you might be able to just put it in your oven at 100, 150 C. Um, and, you know, like I said, you might be releasing this ethanol into your oven and then it catches on fire. So what I would do is I would heat it under a vacuum. I would put an oil bath on the top of your oven or whatever. Uh, and have your apparatus, like a, a brown bottom flask where you have your product in there, and then put a vacuum on it. You know what I mean? Heat it up, 
So it's above, you know, 100, or at least that'd be above 78C, right? Um, and then put a vacuum on it while it's heated in the oil bath. You know what I mean? That way you heat it up, it comes off, the vacuum sucks all the gases out, and you're left with anhydrous sodium methyl sulfate. It's that simple, okay? Um, now I got about plus 55 grams. You can see up here, 76.3% is this. You know, if I'm right about it forming this crystallization with the ethanol, 20, almost 24% is that, and 76% is that. So I times it by that to see that uh, if it is, if there is ethanol crystallization in there, only 42 grams of this is my actual product. The other, what, uh, 8, 5 is 13. The other 13 grams is ethanol. Um, so at 42 grams, that would be 28.4% of one mole. And we started out with two moles of sulfuric acid, and then I even added a little bit more. So we it, figuring it out as a two starting out two moles, we got a 14% yield, which sucks. Um, I did do this experiment a second time, but only I used half of everything. I used instead of two moles, I used one mole of uh, sulfuric acid. I doubled that as the ethanol, and I, I even added in half as much as I added in last time as sulfuric acid extra. And we'll see. I'll put in the description below here what my yield was on that. Uh, because I, I notice a lot of times when I'm doing stuff on camera, my yield is always a lot more crappy than what it is when I'm not on camera. Uh, because you're always having the camera in your way, and you know what I mean? It's just, you'll never get as good as a yield as you would without having to go to camera. And then keep in mind, each time I improve this, uh, my percentage, I'll leave with in the description below the video, just like I do with all my videos, if I improve it, I'll put below there how I improved it. If I improve it enough, you know, like I got 14% yield, hey, if I can bring that up to 70%, obviously I'm going to make another video uh, to update. Now, keep in mind though, 14% sounds terrible, and it is terrible. But if you, do, if you don't start with anhydrous chemicals in the beginning, like I did not, okay, I used the sulfuric acid straight out of the bottle. I only used azeotrope ethanol. I didn't dry it out completely. And I didn't remove the water. The very first step where we added ethanol and sulfuric acid together to make ethyl sulfonic acid, we had to reflux it. And when I refluxed it, I didn't remove any of the water like you're supposed to do when you're doing a fissure of sterification. When you're making an ester, you need to get rid of the water as it's made, otherwise the equilibrium will stop the reaction as soon as you make it. some water. And we already put water in it to get those. We were already kind of screwed there. But I wanted to see what kind of uh, yield I would get by just you know, not being everything anhydrous like that when you get here. You know what I mean? It's a lot faster that way. But you can see that obviously you need to at least start with no water and try to get rid of some of the water during the reaction. I gave one example of how to remove the water with a soft sweat uh, apparatus. Another way is if you can get something into the pot that won't react with anything, but will form an azeotrope with the water that will boil below the boiling point of everything. You know, it has to boil below 78C. Then you can distill it out, right, as it's being made. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to bring up before I end this video that I am selling t-shirts on Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description below this video. So if you want to help the channel, that's the way you can. I'll, I get a $5 profit from each shirt that's sold. Um, they have different logos and designs that I put on them, although right now I can only put up two t-shirts, two or two logos on uh, the clothing. So uh, I can sell 10 t-shirts, then I can put more logos on oh, So my buddy is selling shirts. Um, they're political type shirts. Um, survivalist type shirts uh, and uh, I forget what else 
But anyways, I'll leave a link to his shirts on Amazon that he's selling, and also a link to his uh, channel if you want to check them out. It's called Old Man's Ramblings. You can tell have a great day, and always remember, science is great.